Do you know the story of Homo Ergaster, one of the earliest explorers of our ancient world? In this series, we'll uncover how these remarkable travelers ventured beyond Africa, adapting to new environments and shaping the path of human evolution. Welcome to History with Fitbot, let's journey through time together. Part 1. The Emergence of Homo Ergaster Homo ergaster emerged as a distinct species around 1.9 million years ago in East Africa. This species, often referred to as working man, represents a pivotal shift in the evolutionary journey of hominins. Their appearance coincides with significant changes in the environment and ecology of the African continent. During this time, the climate in East Africa was gradually becoming drier, leading to the expansion of savannas and open woodlands, the changing landscape likely created new challenges and opportunities for early hominins, driving their evolution towards greater adaptability. Homo ergaster evolved from earlier species like Homo habilis, but exhibited marked differences that made them better suited to their environment. Their larger brain size, roughly 600 to 900 cubic centimeters, was a significant step up from their predecessors, indicating an increase in cognitive capacity this development suggests a growing ability to solve problems, plan ahead, and adapt to varying conditions. With a more modern body structure, including longer legs and a more efficient bipedal gait, they were better equipped for long-distance travel than earlier hominins. This anatomical shift allowed Homo ergaster to move more effectively across open landscapes in search of food, water, and shelter. One of the most striking features of Homo ergaster is their body proportion, Unlike their shorter-limbed ancestors, Homo ergaster had longer legs and a narrower pelvis. These changes improved their walking and running efficiency, making them capable of covering vast distances with less energy expenditure. This adaptation was crucial in a changing environment, where resources were often scattered and seasonal migrations were necessary for survival. The evolution of Homo ergaster marked the beginning of a new phase in human evolution, characterized by a more active and mobile lifestyle. This mobility enabled them to exploit a wider range of ecological niches, from river valleys to arid savannas. The increased reliance on bipedalism not only allowed them to travel further, but also freed their hands for other activities, such as toolmaking and gathering food. Homo ergaster's emergence is closely tied to the development of more sophisticated stone tools. They are often associated with the Acheulean tool culture, which represents a major advancement over the earlier Olduin tradition. Acheulean tools, such as hand axes, were more complex and required a greater degree of planning and skill to produce. The creation of these tools involved selecting specific types of stone, shaping them into bifacial implements, and using them for various tasks like butchering animals and processing plant materials. This shift in technology reflects a significant increase in cognitive abilities and problem-solving skills. It also suggests that Homo ergaster had a better understanding of the natural world, including the properties of different materials and how to manipulate them for their benefit. The fossil record provides valuable insights into the lives of Homo ergaster. Notable discoveries, such as the Turkana boy fossil in Kenya, offer a detailed look at the physical characteristics of this species. The Turkana boy, an almost complete skeleton of a young Homo ergaster, reveals that they had a tall, slender body adapted to life in open landscapes. His long legs and narrow pelvis suggest that he was built for walking long distances, much like modern humans. The presence of such fossils in diverse locations across Africa indicates that Homo ergaster was not confined to a single region but instead moved across vast territories in search of resources. This mobility likely contributed to their evolutionary success and ability to adapt to different environments. The period during which Homo ergaster thrived was one of significant ecological changes. As the African climate became more arid, forests receded and open grasslands expanded. This transformation likely played a crucial role in shaping the evolutionary path of Homo ergaster. Their ability to adapt to these changes by becoming more mobile and using tools more effectively gave them a competitive edge over other hominins. It allowed them to survive in areas where food sources were scattered and unpredictable. Homo ergaster's emergence is also a story of resilience. 
as they adapted to new challenges, they laid the groundwork for future human evolution. Their ability to walk long distances, adapt to diverse environments, and innovate with tools set the stage for later species, including Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. By understanding the emergence of Homo ergaster, we gain insight into the fundamental shifts that shaped the course of human history. Their story is one of adaptation, survival, and the enduring drive to explore new horizons. It is a testament to the remarkable journey of our ancient ancestors as they began their long trek across the African landscape. Part 2. Anatomy Built for Endurance The anatomy of Homo ergaster is a testament to their evolutionary shift towards endurance and mobility. Unlike their earlier ancestors, who were more suited for life in the trees and short-distance movements, Homo ergaster had a body built for the long haul. Their longer legs, shorter arms, and narrow pelvis made them efficient walkers, allowing them to cover greater distances with less energy. These anatomical adaptations were crucial in a world where resources were often spread out over vast areas. The ability to move efficiently over open landscapes would have provided Homo ergaster with access to more diverse food sources and better opportunities for survival. One of the most significant adaptations in Homo ergaster was their upright posture. This allowed for a more energy-efficient gait, reducing the amount of energy needed for walking and running. The evolution of a more upright stance also freed their hands, making it easier to carry tools, food, and other resources during their travels. This change in posture was accompanied by a shift in the structure of their spine and pelvis, which provided greater stability during bipedal movement. These changes in their anatomy made Homo ergaster one of the most mobile hominins of their time. Homo ergaster also had a unique adaptation in their thermoregulatory system. Unlike earlier species, they had a more developed system for cooling their bodies through sweating. This adaptation would have been particularly advantageous in the hot, arid climates of Africa, where overheating could be a significant threat. The ability to sweat allowed Homo ergaster to stay active during the heat of the day, while other animals and hominins might have been forced to seek shelter. This endurance-based adaptation gave them an edge in covering large distances, hunting game, and gathering food during times when competition was low. Their body shape, characterized by a longer, leaner build, was well suited for distance running and walking. This would have allowed them to chase down prey over long distances, a hunting strategy known as persistence hunting. By using their endurance to exhaust their prey, Homo ergaster could secure meat, which was a rich source of protein and fat. This dietary shift provided them with the energy needed to sustain their active lifestyle and long-distance travels. It also played a role in the development of their brain, as the consumption of nutrient-dense foods supported cognitive growth. Homo ergaster's increased mobility was not just about physical capabilities. It was also about their ability to adapt to new environments as they moved across the African continent. Their skeletal structure shows signs of robustness, indicating that they were well adapted to a physically demanding lifestyle. This strength would have been essential for fending off predators, constructing shelters, and foraging for food over extended areas. As a result, Homo ergaster could thrive in regions where less adaptable hominins might have struggled to survive. The increased mobility of Homo ergaster also suggests a shift in their social dynamics. Living in groups would have been advantageous for protection, cooperative hunting, and sharing resources during migrations. The ability to travel together would have fostered a sense of community and allowed for the development of more complex social behaviors. This social aspect of their lives may have been crucial for their survival during challenging periods, such as droughts or resource scarcity. Their social structure likely involved more coordinated efforts, such as group foraging and mutual protection which could be facilitated by their more advanced cognitive abilities. Their movement across different habitats also exposed Homo ergaster to a variety of ecological challenges. From the grasslands of East Africa to the arid regions of North Africa, they had to adapt to different climates and food sources. This ability to navigate various environments is reflected in their fossil record, which shows a wide geographic distribution. Homo ergaster fossils have been found in regions that were previously considered uninhabitable for early hominins. 
This suggests that their ability to adapt and endure made them one of the most successful early human species. The endurance and mobility of Homo ergaster were also critical in their interactions with other species. Their ability to move across large areas would have brought them into contact with different animals, some of which could have been potential prey or threats. This exposure would have shaped their hunting strategies and defensive behaviors, making them more versatile and adaptive in various situations. It is likely that their encounters with diverse species also influenced their tool use, as they adapted their implements to different environments and prey types. The adaptations that enabled Homo ergaster to travel long distances were not only physical but also cultural. As they moved into new areas, they would have encountered new challenges that required innovative solutions. This drive for innovation may have pushed them to improve their toolmaking techniques and find new ways to exploit the resources around them. It reflects a key aspect of human evolution, the ability to adapt culturally as well as physically. Homo ergaster's story is one of adaptation and endurance, as they harness their physical capabilities to explore new horizons and push the boundaries of what early humans could achieve. Their journey is a testament to the resilience and ingenuity that defines the human spirit. Part 3. Stone Tools and Technological Innovations Homo ergaster's development of more advanced stone tools marked a turning point in their evolutionary journey. This leap in technology is often associated with the Acheulean tool culture, which first appeared around 1.76 million years ago. Unlike their Olduin predecessors, Acheulean tools, such as the hand axe, were more sophisticated and required a higher level of cognitive ability to create. These tools were typically bifacial, meaning they were shaped on both sides, creating a sharper and more durable edge. The production of such tools involved planning and foresight, indicating that Homo ergaster possessed a more complex understanding of materials and the uses they could be put to. The Acheulean hand axe is one of the most iconic tools associated with Homo ergaster. It served multiple purposes, from cutting meat and skinning animals to digging for tubers and breaking open bones for marrow. This versatility made it an essential part of their survival toolkit, allowing them to exploit a wider range of food sources. The ability to create such tools suggests that Homo ergaster had a deeper understanding of the natural world, including knowledge of which rocks were best for making tools and how to shape them for specific tasks. These skills would have been passed down through social learning, indicating the presence of teaching and possibly rudimentary forms of communication within their groups. The process of making Acheulean tools involved several steps. Homo ergaster would first select a suitable piece of stone, often choosing a type that was hard and fine-grained. Using a hammerstone, they would then strike the core to remove flakes, gradually shaping it into the desired form. The end product was a tool that could be used for a variety of purposes, making it a valuable asset in their daily lives. This increased control over their environment through technology reflects a significant shift in how early humans interacted with their surroundings. It also demonstrates a capacity for abstract thinking, as the process of creating a hand axe required visualizing the end result and shaping the stone accordingly. The widespread distribution of Acheulean tools suggests that Homo ergaster shared these innovations across different regions. Tools have been found at various archaeological sites throughout Africa from the Rift Valley in East Africa to the arid regions of North Africa. This distribution indicates that the knowledge of toolmaking was not isolated but spread among groups as they migrated. It also suggests that these tools played a key role in their ability to adapt to new environments. By carrying their toolmaking skills with them, Homo ergaster could exploit new resources and adapt to different ecological challenges as they moved. The impact of these technological innovations extended beyond mere survival. The development of more advanced tools also had social and cultural implications. The process of toolmaking likely fostered greater social interaction and cooperation within groups. Teaching younger members of the group how to create and use tools would have been essential for passing on this knowledge, creating a sense of continuity and shared cultural practices. This social learning process may have laid the foundation for more complex forms of communication, as group members shared techniques and strategies. It represents an early form of cultural transmission, a key feature that would become even more pronounced in later hominin species. 
the Acheulean tools also reflect an increasing reliance on meat in Homo ergaster's diet. With sharper and more efficient cutting tools, they could butcher large animals more effectively, accessing high-quality sources of protein and fat. This dietary shift provided the necessary energy to fuel their larger brains and sustain their active lifestyle. Access to animal meat, combined with the ability to process it using tools, would have been a significant advantage in regions where plant-based food sources were seasonal or scarce. This dietary flexibility allowed Homo or Gaster to thrive in diverse environments, further enhancing their capacity for long-distance travel and migration. In addition to hand axes, Homo or Gaster likely used other types of tools, such as simple scrapers and chisels. These tools would have been used for tasks like preparing hides, digging for roots, and processing plant materials. The ability to create a variety of tools suggests that Homo ergaster had a broad understanding of their environment and how to manipulate it to meet their needs. This technological versatility made them more resilient to changes in their surroundings, as they could adapt their tools to suit different situations. It also reflects an important step in the evolution of human ingenuity, as early humans began to use technology as a means of adapting to new challenges. The Acheulean tradition persisted for over a million years, showing that Homo ergaster's toolmaking skills were both effective and enduring. This longevity suggests that these tools met the needs of successive generations, providing a stable foundation for future technological advances. It also indicates that the basic principles of toolmaking, once established, were refined and improved upon over time. The presence of Acheulean tools alongside later hominin species, such as Homo erectus, demonstrates that Homo ergaster's technological legacy continued to influence human evolution long after their time. As we examine the tools left behind by Homo ergaster, we gain a deeper understanding of their cognitive abilities and their relationship with the environment. These tools are more than just artifacts. They represent a window into the minds of our ancient ancestors. They reveal how Homo ergaster approached the challenges of survival, using their ingenuity to shape the world around them. The story of Homo ergaster's technological innovations is one of creativity, problem-solving, and the early stirrings of human culture. It is a story that connects us to the earliest roots of our own technological heritage. The mastery of stone tools by Homo ergaster marked a turning point in human evolution. It signaled a shift towards greater control over the environment and a more proactive approach to survival. This technological leap laid the groundwork for future innovations, as later hominin species built upon the foundation established by Homo ergaster. By understanding the significance of these early tools, we can appreciate the profound impact they had on the trajectory of human evolution. They represent the first steps in a journey of innovation that would ultimately lead to the development of modern human technology. Part 4. Leaving Africa. The First Steps Beyond. One of the most significant achievements of Homo ergaster was their migration out of Africa. This event marked the first time a human species ventured so far from its birthplace, laying the groundwork for future migrations by later hominins. The journey beyond Africa is believed to have begun around 1.8 million years ago, coinciding with changes in the climate and environment. As Africa's climate became more arid and seasonal, Homo ergaster adapted to the open savannas, becoming increasingly mobile in their search for food and water. This adaptability and physical endurance enabled them to explore new territories beyond the African continent. The evidence of Homo ergaster's early migration comes from fossil discoveries at key sites outside of Africa. One of the most significant finds is the Dmanasai site in present-day Georgia. Here, researchers have uncovered the remains of several Homo ergaster individuals, dating back to approximately 1.77 million years ago. These fossils include a mix of primitive and advanced traits, providing valuable insights into the physical characteristics of early migrants. The discovery of stone tools alongside these fossils suggests that Homo ergaster brought their Acheulean technology with them as they ventured into new environments. The Dmanasai fossils reveal that Homo ergaster was capable of adapting to a variety of climates. The site is situated in a temperate zone, which would have posed different challenges compared to the African savannas. 
This adaptability is reflected in the tools they made and the resources they utilized. The presence of both animal bones and plant remains at the site suggests that Homo ergaster maintained a flexible diet, allowing them to survive in different ecological settings. This dietary adaptability would have been a key factor in their ability to establish themselves in new regions. The migration of Homo ergaster into Eurasia raises important questions about their motivations and the factors that drove them to explore new territories. One theory suggests that shifts in the climate may have caused changes in the distribution of food resources, prompting groups of Homo ergaster to follow migrating herds or search for new sources of water. Another possibility is that social dynamics, such as competition with other hominin groups or internal population pressures, played a role in driving some groups to seek new lands. It is likely that a combination of these factors influenced their decision to move beyond Africa. Their journey into Eurasia would not have been easy. Homo ergaster would have encountered new predators, unfamiliar landscapes, and potentially harsher weather conditions. Their success in adapting to these challenges speaks to their resilience and resourcefulness. By carrying their stone tools with them, they could continue to hunt and process food in unfamiliar environments. This ability to adapt their technology to new contexts was crucial in their ability to survive outside of Africa. It also represents one of the earliest examples of human migration as a strategy for survival. The migration of Homo ergaster is also significant because it set a precedent for later waves of human expansion. Their movement into Eurasia paved the way for subsequent migrations by Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and eventually Homo sapiens. By crossing geographical barriers and adapting to new environments, Homo ergaster established a pattern of exploration and adaptation that would become a hallmark of the human species. Their success in these endeavors laid the groundwork for the global spread of humans that followed. Part 5. Adapting to New Environments As Homo ergaster ventured beyond the familiar landscapes of Africa, their journey into new regions brought them face to face with a variety of climates and ecosystems. This shift was a defining aspect of their survival strategy. Unlike their more geographically restricted predecessors, Homo ergaster displayed a remarkable ability to adapt to diverse environments. From the hot and arid savannas of Africa to the temperate regions of Eurasia, they encountered challenges that tested their physical and cognitive capabilities. The fossil record reveals that Homo ergaster thrived in regions that presented different ecological challenges, suggesting that they possessed a high degree of flexibility in their behavior and diet, their ability to adapt is evident in the diverse locations where their remains have been discovered. Sites such as Dmanasai in Georgia, alongside other locations in East Africa, show that Homo ergaster could survive in a wide range of conditions. This adaptability was likely rooted in their flexible diet and their ability to utilize different types of tools. Homo ergaster's reliance on both animal and plant resources allowed them to exploit new food sources as they moved. This omnivorous diet would have been a significant advantage in environments where food availability varied with the seasons. Their Acheulean tools, such as the hand axe, played a crucial role in their adaptation to different habitats. These tools enabled Homo ergaster to process a variety of materials, from animal carcasses to tough plant fibers. As they migrated into new regions, they adapted their tool-making techniques to suit the local materials available. This versatility is reflected in the slight variations in Acheulean tools found across different regions, suggesting that Homo ergaster modified their methods based on the resources they encountered. The ability to create and adapt tools provided them with the means to tackle new challenges as they arose. In addition to technological adaptations, Homo ergaster developed strategies for coping with environmental changes. For example, their use of shelters would have allowed them to survive in areas with more extreme weather conditions. Evidence of potential shelters, such as the arrangement of stones and simple structures at certain archaeological sites, suggests that they were capable of creating temporary protection from the elements. These shelters, combined with the warmth and protection provided by controlled fire, would have been essential for surviving colder nights in temperate regions. While evidence for the controlled use of fire by Homo ergaster remains debated, it is possible that they used natural fires to their advantage, benefiting from the warmth and safety it provided. 
Homo ergaster's physical endurance also played a key role in their ability to adapt to new regions. Their longer legs and narrow pelvis allowed them to cover large distances in search of food and water. This mobility would have been particularly advantageous in environments where resources were scattered and difficult to access. The ability to move efficiently over long distances would have enabled them to follow migrating herds of animals or reach distant sources of water during dry seasons. This adaptability made Homo ergaster a resilient species, capable of surviving in regions that presented significant challenges to earlier hominins. The seasonal variations in food availability in new regions would have required Homo ergaster to develop strategies for coping with scarcity. Unlike earlier species that may have relied more heavily on a single type of food source, Homo ergaster's dietary flexibility allowed them to shift between plant and animal resources depending on what was available. This ability to adjust their diet to changing conditions would have made them less vulnerable to periods of food scarcity. It also suggests that they had a deeper understanding of their environment, including knowledge of when and where certain foods could be found. This seasonal awareness would have been crucial in regions with cold winters or dry seasons, where food sources varied significantly throughout the year. Their adaptability also extended to their social behaviors. Homo ergaster's ability to live in groups would have provided a strategic advantage in unfamiliar environments. Groups could cooperate in hunting, foraging, and building shelters, making it easier to gather resources and protect themselves from predators. Social living would have also facilitated the sharing of knowledge about new environments, such as where to find water sources or how to avoid dangerous animals. This sharing of information would have been crucial for survival, especially as groups moved into unfamiliar territories where traditional knowledge of the landscape no longer applied. The challenges of adapting to new environments likely also played a role in shaping the cognitive development of Homo ergaster. The need to plan for seasonal changes, adapt to different food sources, and create tools for various tasks would have required more complex problem-solving abilities. This cognitive flexibility would have been a key factor in their success as they navigated the diverse landscapes of Eurasia and Africa. It reflects a crucial step in the evolution of the human brain, as early hominins like Homo ergaster began to engage with their environment in more sophisticated ways. Homo ergaster's adaptability to new environments can also be seen in their interactions with other species and the natural world. As they moved into new territories, they would have encountered different predators and competitors, requiring them to develop new strategies for defense and hunting. Their use of tools, social cooperation, and physical endurance would have provided them with an edge over other species in these encounters. These adaptations would have allowed Homo ergaster to establish themselves in regions where earlier hominins may have struggled to survive. Their ability to thrive in a wide range of environments speaks to their resilience and the versatility that characterize their approach to survival. The journey of Homo ergaster into new regions is a testament to their adaptability and the innovative spirit that drove their evolution. It represents a critical stage in the story of human migration, as they became one of the first hominins to successfully move beyond Africa and adapt to the diverse challenges of the wider world. Their story is not just one of physical endurance, but also of the mental agility required to navigate new landscapes and solve complex problems. It is a story that continues to inspire, revealing how early humans pushed the boundaries of what was possible and paved the way for future generations to explore and adapt to the world around them. Part 6. Social Structures and Communication the social structures of Homo ergaster played a fundamental role in their survival and success as long-distance travelers. Living in groups would have provided numerous advantages, from protection against predators to more efficient hunting and foraging. These groups likely consisted of family units, with members cooperating to find food, care for the young, and defend against external threats. The presence of social bonds within groups would have created a sense of community, fostering cooperation and shared responsibilities. Such social organization would have been essential for the survival of Homo ergaster in the diverse and often challenging environments they encountered. One of the key aspects of Homo ergaster's social life would have been communication. While they did not possess language as we know it today, they likely used a range of vocalizations, gestures, and facial expressions to convey information. 
These early forms of communication would have been crucial for coordinating activities like hunting and foraging. Vocalizations might have been used to alert others to the presence of danger, signal the location of food, or maintain contact while traveling through dense vegetation. This rudimentary communication system would have helped Homo ergaster to function effectively as a group, even without the complex language of later hominins. The process of teaching and learning within groups would have also been a vital aspect of their social structure. Older, more experienced individuals likely played a role in passing down knowledge about toolmaking, hunting techniques, and the use of different resources. This transmission of skills and knowledge would have been crucial for the continuity of cultural practices within Homo or Gaster communities. It also suggests that they possessed the cognitive capacity for social learning which is a hallmark of later human behavior. Teaching younger members of the group how to create and use tools, for example, would have been an investment in the survival of the entire group. Social bonds within homo or gaster groups would have been reinforced through shared activities, such as gathering around a fire or sharing food. While definitive evidence of controlled fire use by homo or gaster is still debated, it is likely that they made use of natural fires when possible, Sitting together around a fire could have provided warmth, protection, and a space for social interaction. These moments of gathering would have allowed individuals to strengthen their bonds and share information about the surrounding environment. Such social cohesion would have been particularly important during periods of migration, when groups needed to rely on each other for support and cooperation. Homo or Gaster's social life was likely shaped by their interactions with other hominin species as well. As they moved into new territories, they would have encountered other hominins, such as Homo erectus in Asia. These encounters may have involved competition for resources, but they could also have provided opportunities for the exchange of knowledge and techniques. It is possible that Homo or Gaster groups learn from their interactions with other species, adapting new strategies for survival in the process. These interactions would have influenced their social dynamics as they adapted to living alongside other intelligent beings. The ability to cooperate within groups would have been particularly important for hunting larger prey. Unlike solitary predators, Homo or Gaster would have benefited from coordinating their efforts during hunts. Working together to drive animals towards a trap or ambush would have increased their chances of success. The sharing of food after a successful hunt would have reinforced social bonds and ensured that all members of the group benefited from the collective effort. This cooperative hunting behavior suggests that Homo or Gaster had a social structure that supported shared goals and mutual benefit. The development of more complex social structures may have also contributed to the evolution of empathy and altruism within Homo or Gaster groups. Caring for the sick, injured, or young members of the group would have been a sign of a more advanced social behavior. Such behaviors would have strengthened the group's cohesion, making them more resilient in the face of challenges. It is possible that these early forms of empathy and cooperation laid the groundwork for the social behaviors seen in later human evolution. Their social structures also played a role in shaping their cultural practices. As Homo or Gaster migrated into new regions, they carried their knowledge of toolmaking, hunting strategies, and social organization with them. This continuity of cultural practices would have helped them maintain a sense of identity and stability, even as they adapted to new environments. The sharing of cultural knowledge within and between groups would have ensured that the skills necessary for survival were preserved across generations. It represents an early form of cultural continuity, which is a defining feature of later human societies. Homo or Gaster's ability to live in social groups and communicate effectively set them apart from many other species. Their social behaviors and cooperative strategies were key to their success as one of the first hominins to explore and adapt to a wide range of environments. These early social structures laid the foundation for the complex societies that would emerge with later human evolution. They represent a crucial step in the development of the social nature of our species, highlighting the importance of cooperation communication, and shared knowledge in the story of human evolution. Part 7. Survival Strategies in Changing Climates As Earth's climate fluctuated throughout the Pleistocene, Homo or Gaster faced a dynamic and often unpredictable environment. Their survival in such conditions required a range of adaptive strategies, 
allowing them to thrive despite the challenges posed by shifting weather patterns, changing ecosystems, and varying availability of resources. This part of their story is a testament to their resilience and ingenuity as they navigated the climatic shifts that defined their era. Unlike their earlier ancestors, who may have been more reliant on stable environments, Homo ergaster developed the ability to adjust their behavior and strategies to meet the demands of a world in flux. The climatic changes of the Pleistocene had a profound impact on the African landscape. As the continent experienced cycles of glaciation and interglaciation, alternating periods of cool, dry climates and warmer, wetter conditions led to the expansion and contraction of forests, grasslands, and deserts. These changes directly influenced the availability of water sources, the distribution of plants, and the migration patterns of animal herds. For Homo ergaster, adapting to these changes was crucial for maintaining access to food and other resources. Their ability to move over long distances enabled them to follow seasonal changes, migrating to areas where food was more abundant during different times of the year. One of the primary strategies Homo ergaster employed was dietary flexibility. Unlike earlier hominins, who might have had a more specialized diet, Homo ergaster's ability to consume a wide range of foods allowed them to adapt to changes in resource availability. During periods when plant-based foods were scarce, they could rely more heavily on hunting and scavenging animal meat. Conversely, when animal prey was harder to find, they could turn to gathering roots, tubers, and other plant materials. This omnivorous diet would have provided a buffer against periods of food scarcity, making Homo ergaster more resilient in the face of environmental fluctuations. Their stone tools, especially Acheulean hand axes, played a crucial role in their ability to process various types of food. These tools allowed them to butcher large animals efficiently, extracting meat and marrow that provided essential nutrients. Additionally, the sharp edges of hand axes could be used to dig for underground tubers and process tough plant materials. This ability to exploit diverse food sources meant that Homo ergaster could survive in a variety of environments, from river valleys rich in vegetation to more arid regions where game was the primary food source. Their tools were not just a means of survival but a symbol of their adaptability and ingenuity. Water availability was another critical factor in Homo ergaster's survival strategy. As they moved through regions with varying rainfall patterns, access to water sources would have been a key determinant of their movements. Rivers, lakes, and springs provided essential hydration not only for Homo ergaster but also for the animals they hunted. By following the seasonal movements of game animals to and from water sources, Homo ergaster could ensure a steady supply of food. Fossil evidence from sites near ancient riverbeds and lakes suggests that they often established temporary camps near water sources, using them as strategic bases for foraging and hunting. The ability to adapt to changing climates also required an understanding of the landscape and seasonal patterns. Homo ergaster likely developed knowledge about when and where certain resources could be found. This knowledge would have been passed down through generations, enabling groups to plan their movements based on the time of year. Such an understanding of seasonal changes would have been particularly important in regions with more pronounced wet and dry seasons. This capacity for seasonal awareness reflects a level of cognitive complexity that helped Homo ergaster to anticipate changes in their environment and respond accordingly. Their adaptation to diverse climates also influenced their social behaviors. During times of scarcity, cooperation within groups would have been essential for survival. Working together to hunt large prey or to gather water and edible plants would have ensured that resources were shared among all members. This social cohesion would have strengthened bonds within the group, making them more resilient during difficult periods. The presence of social structures that emphasized sharing and cooperation likely helped Homo ergaster to endure periods when resources were less predictable. It reflects an early form of social support that would become even more pronounced in later hominins. Homo ergaster's ability to adapt to changing climates also had implications for their physical evolution. Over time, the selective pressures of their environment may have favored individuals with traits that made them better suited for endurance, mobility, and adaptability. For example, their long legs and narrow pelvis would have allowed them to travel more efficiently between regions with varying resources. 
These physical traits would have been especially advantageous during periods of climatic instability when the ability to relocate quickly could mean the difference between life and death. The evolutionary changes that took place during this time reflect the close relationship between environmental challenges and physical adaptation in early human evolution. As Homo ergaster ventured into new territories beyond Africa, they encountered different climatic challenges. In Eurasia, they would have faced colder temperatures and more varied seasonal changes than those found in the African savannas. Adapting to these new conditions would have required further innovations, such as finding ways to stay warm during cooler nights and adjusting their diet to include new types of food sources. The evidence of Homo ergaster's presence in regions like Manasai suggests that they were successful in adapting to these new environments, even without the use of complex clothing or shelter. This adaptability marks them as one of the most versatile early human species. Their survival strategies in the face of climate change hold valuable lessons about resilience and adaptability. The ability of Homo ergaster to adjust their behavior and technology to suit their environment reflects a key aspect of human evolution, the capacity to adapt and innovate in response to changing conditions. It is a story that speaks to the enduring nature of the human spirit, as our ancestors found ways to survive and thrive in a world that was constantly evolving. By studying Homo ergaster strategies for survival, we gain a deeper appreciation for the challenges they faced and the ingenuity that allowed them to overcome those challenges. Their story reminds us that the journey of human evolution is not just about physical change, but about the creativity and determination that have driven us forward throughout history. Part 8. The Role of Fire in Their Journeys Fire has long been considered a critical element in the story of human evolution. While the evidence for the controlled use of fire by Homo ergaster is still debated, there is a strong possibility that they interacted with natural fires in their environment. The ability to utilize fire would have provided numerous advantages, from warmth during cooler nights to protection from predators and the ability to process food. This part explores how fire may have shaped the lives of Homo ergaster, influencing their migration patterns and their capacity to adapt to new environments. Natural fires, often started by lightning strikes, would have been a common occurrence in the savannas of Africa. Homo ergaster may have observed the effects of fire on the landscape, such as the clearing of vegetation and the attraction of game animals to the newly fertile ground. They might have followed these naturally occurring fires, taking advantage of the open areas they created and the opportunities for hunting that arose in their aftermath. The ability to understand and capitalize on these natural events reflects a growing awareness of the forces at play in their environment. While direct evidence of controlled fire use by Homo ergaster is limited, some archaeological sites suggest that they might have had some familiarity with fire. Sites such as Chesawanja in Kenya and Swartkrans in South Africa contain evidence of burned bones and heated stones, which some researchers have interpreted as signs of early fire use. However, the debate continues as to whether these sites represent controlled use or natural fires that happen to occur near hominin activity. Regardless, the presence of charred remains alongside Homo or Gaster fossils suggests that fire played some role in their lives, even if it was not yet under their full control. The benefits of fire, even if it was not controlled, would have been significant for Homo or Gaster. A fire could provide warmth during cold nights, extending their ability to survive in cooler climates beyond the African tropics. It also would have acted as a deterrent against large predators, offering a sense of safety during the night when many animals were most active. This newfound ability to remain active or secure at night would have opened up new possibilities for foraging, hunting, and socializing after dark. It represents an early step towards the mastery of fire that would later define human evolution. Fire might also have played a role in the dietary adaptations of Homo ergaster. Although there is no conclusive evidence that they cooked their food, the proximity of Homo ergaster to natural fires may have led to accidental cooking. Cooked meat and tubers are easier to digest and provide more nutrients, which could have given an advantage to those who consumed them. This accidental discovery would have paved the way for later controlled use of fire, transforming the diet of early humans and providing the extra calories needed to support larger brains and more physically demanding lifestyles. The potential impact of fire on their diet highlights the interconnected nature of physical and cultural evolution in early humans. 
In addition to its practical benefits, fire may have had cultural and social significance for Homo ergaster. Gatherings around natural fires could have become a focal point for social interaction, providing opportunities for bonding and communication. These gatherings may have fostered a sense of community and shared identity, as individuals came together to share warmth and food. The experience of sitting around a fire, even if it was not yet fully controlled, would have created a space for social learning and the exchange of knowledge. It represents one of the earliest examples of humans using the natural world to shape their social lives. Fire also had an impact on the migration patterns of Homo ergaster. The ability to follow natural fires and use them as a resource would have influenced their movements across the landscape. Fire would have created patches of new growth in its wake, attracting herbivores and providing opportunities for hunting. By following these burned areas, Homo ergaster could have accessed new sources of food and water, helping them to survive during periods of scarcity. This interaction with fire reflects their ability to adapt to environmental changes and use natural phenomena to their advantage. The story of Homo ergaster and fire is one of curiosity and adaptation. While they may not have fully mastered the art of making fire, their interactions with it reveal a growing understanding of the world around them. It is a story of early humans beginning to harness the elements, using natural forces to improve their chances of survival. This relationship with fire would have laid the foundation for later hominin species to develop more sophisticated methods of fire control, ultimately leading to the profound changes that fire brought to human evolution. The role of fire in Homo ergaster's journey reminds us of the importance of discovery and innovation in the story of our species. It is a story of how our ancestors began to unlock the secrets of the natural world, setting the stage for the advances that would define the path to modern humanity. Part 9. Interaction with Other Hominin Species As Homo ergaster expanded beyond Africa, they did not venture into an empty world. Their migration brought them into contact with other hominin species, creating opportunities for interaction, competition, and perhaps even cultural exchange. These interactions with different hominins such as Homo erectus, and possibly earlier species like Homo habilis, added complexity to the story of human evolution. Understanding these encounters helps to shed light on how Homo ergaster navigated a world shared with other intelligent beings. It also highlights the unique adaptations and survival strategies that set them apart and allowed them to thrive across diverse regions. One of the most intriguing areas of study is the overlap between Homo ergaster and Homo erectus. While some researchers view these two as separate species, others suggest that they may represent regional variations of the same lineage. This debate stems from the similarities in their physical characteristics and tool-making abilities. Fossil evidence from sites in Africa, such as Kubi Fora in Kenya and Manasai in Georgia, offers glimpses into the physical and cultural traits they shared. Both species exhibited advanced tool use, including Acheulean hand axes, suggesting that they had a comparable understanding of their environment and its resources. Despite their similarities, there may have been significant differences in the way Homo ergaster and Homo erectus adapted to their respective regions. Homo ergaster, thriving primarily in Africa, adapted to the hot and arid climates of the savannas and woodlands. In contrast, Homo erectus ventured further into Asia and adapted to a broader range of climates, from temperate zones to more tropical environments. These regional adaptations may have influenced their survival strategies and interactions with other species. If these two groups did encounter each other, it is possible that their shared heritage allowed for some level of understanding and cooperation, especially in hunting and toolmaking. However, they may have also competed for similar resources, such as game animals and water sources. The possibility of interactions between Homo ergaster and other earlier hominins, like Homo habilis, is also worth exploring. Homo habilis, a likely ancestor of Homo ergaster, was one of the first hominins to use simple stone tools. As Homo ergaster evolved with more advanced technology and social behaviors, they may have encountered groups of Homo habilis still living in parts of Africa. Such encounters might have led to a mixture of competition and cultural exchange. Homo ergaster's more sophisticated Acheulean tools would have provided them with an advantage in exploiting resources, 
but they could also have learned from Homo habilis local knowledge of the environment. The dynamics of these interactions would have depended largely on the environmental conditions and the availability of resources. In regions where food and water were plentiful, Homo ergaster and other hominins may have been able to coexist peacefully, each occupying different ecological niches. For example, Homo ergaster's ability to hunt larger game and travel longer distances might have complemented the foraging strategies of more localized hominins like Homo habilis. This could have allowed for a form of niche partitioning, where each species focused on different aspects of survival, reducing direct competition. In contrast, during periods of drought or scarcity, competition for resources would have intensified, potentially leading to conflicts over territory and food. One of the most fascinating aspects of these interactions is the possibility of cultural transmission. As Homo ergaster migrated and encountered other hominins, they may have shared knowledge of toolmaking techniques and survival strategies. The similarities in Acheulean tools found across Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Eurasia suggest that ideas and methods could have spread between different groups. This transmission of knowledge would not have been the same as modern cultural exchange, but it represents an early form of idea sharing that could have accelerated technological and social advancements. The spread of tool-making techniques, such as the bifacial shaping of hand axes, could have provided a common cultural thread that connected different hominin populations. The story of Homo ergaster's interactions with other hominins also includes the possibility of genetic exchange. While this idea remains speculative, it is possible that some interbreeding occurred between Homo ergaster and other closely related species. Genetic evidence from later hominins, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, has shown that interbreeding between different human species was a part of our evolutionary history. If similar exchanges occurred between Homo ergaster and other early hominins, it could have contributed to genetic diversity and adaptation within their populations. Such genetic mixing would have allowed for the spread of beneficial traits, such as physical adaptations to specific climates or resistance to certain diseases. The potential for genetic exchange raises questions about the nature of species boundaries in the context of early human evolution. Unlike the clear distinctions we often draw between species today, the boundaries between early hominins may have been more fluid, shaped by ongoing interactions and adaptations. This fluidity challenges the traditional view of human evolution as a linear progression from one species to the next. Instead, it suggests a complex web of relationships, where different groups influenced each other through both cultural and genetic interactions. It highlights the interconnected nature of human evolution, where the survival of one group was often influenced by the presence and behaviors of others. Homo ergaster's interactions with other hominins provide valuable insights into their adaptability and resilience. Their ability to coexist with, learn from, and sometimes compete with other species reflects the versatility that define their approach to survival. It is a story of how early humans navigated a world full of challenges and opportunities, learning to adapt not only to the physical environment but also to the presence of other intelligent beings. These interactions shape the evolutionary path of Homo ergaster, influencing their migration patterns, social structures, and technological advancements. The story of these encounters is also a reminder that the journey of human evolution has always been a shared one. From the earliest times, humans have lived alongside other species, influencing each other in ways that shaped our collective destiny. The interactions between Homo ergaster and other hominins reveal the richness and complexity of our ancient past, where survival often depended on the ability to adapt to both the natural world and the social landscapes created by our fellow hominins. It is a story that connects us to the deep roots of our shared history, reminding us that the path to becoming human was shaped by the diverse and intertwined experiences of many species. Part 10. Legacy and Evolutionary Significance the story of Homo ergaster is one of exploration, adaptation, and resilience. As one of the first hominins to venture beyond Africa and adapt to a variety of new environments, they laid the groundwork for future human migration and the eventual spread of Homo sapiens. Their evolutionary significance lies not only in their physical and technological advancements, but also in their role as pioneers in the ancient world. Homo ergaster's ability to adapt to changing climates, develop sophisticated tools, 
and navigate complex social dynamics set the stage for the next phases of human evolution. One of the most enduring aspects of their legacy is their contribution to the development of human anatomy. The physical traits that defined Homo ergaster, longer legs, a more upright posture, and a narrow pelvis, would become hallmarks of later human species, including Homo sapiens. These adaptations allowed for greater endurance and mobility, enabling them to travel long distances in search of food and resources. This anatomical foundation is what allowed future human populations to spread out of Africa, colonizing new continents and exploring diverse landscapes. The evolutionary changes seen in Homo ergaster represent a crucial step in the development of the modern human form. Homo ergaster's advancements in toolmaking also left a lasting mark on the trajectory of human evolution. The Acheulean hand axes and other tools they developed were not just functional implements. They represented a new way of thinking about the world. The ability to plan and shape a tool for a specific purpose required a level of cognitive complexity that set Homo ergaster apart from earlier species. This leap in technological innovation paved the way for even more sophisticated tool cultures, such as those developed by Homo heidelbergensis and Neanderthals. It is a testament to the role of creativity and problem-solving in the story of human evolution, their migration out of Africa was a groundbreaking event in the history of our species. Homo ergaster's ability to adapt to new regions, from the temperate zones of Eurasia to the challenging landscapes of the Middle East, demonstrated the potential for human populations to expand beyond their initial habitats. This movement set the stage for subsequent waves of migration by later hominins, such as Homo erectus and eventually Homo sapiens, the legacy of their migration is reflected in the global spread of humanity, a process that began with the first steps taken by Homo ergaster beyond their African homeland. It is a story of exploration and the drive to seek out new horizons, a theme that has continued throughout human history. Homo ergaster's social structures and early forms of communication also had a profound impact on the evolution of human behavior. Their ability to cooperate in groups, share knowledge, and possibly teach new skills to younger members of their communities laid the groundwork for the complex social dynamics of later human species. These social behaviors would have been crucial for survival in unfamiliar environments, allowing groups to work together to hunt, forage, and protect each other from threats. The development of these early forms of social organization is a key part of what made Homo ergaster such successful travelers and survivors. Their legacy can be seen in the cooperative nature of modern human societies, where the ability to share knowledge and work together remains a cornerstone of our success. The story of Homo ergaster is also a story of resilience. They lived through periods of climatic change, adapting to new challenges and finding ways to thrive in a world that was often unpredictable. Their ability to adjust their diet, adapt their tools, and migrate in response to environmental shifts reflects a level of adaptability that has been a defining feature of the human lineage. This resilience is what allowed them to survive for over a million years, leaving a legacy that would shape the path of human evolution. It is a reminder of the strength and determination that have always been part of our story as a species. Homo ergaster's interactions with other hominins and their place in the broader evolutionary web provide a nuanced perspective on human evolution. Rather than seeing their story as a linear progression, it becomes clear that the path to modern humans was shaped by a complex interplay of species, each contributing to the mosaic of traits and behaviors that define us today. Homo ergaster's role in this tapestry highlights the importance of understanding our connections to other early humans, and how each branch of the evolutionary tree played a part in shaping the world we know. Their story is a reminder that our journey as a species has always been about adaptation, cooperation, and the pursuit of new possibilities. The legacy of Homo ergaster is not just found in their fossils and tools, but in the enduring human drive to explore, innovate, and adapt. They were among the first to walk long distances across open landscapes, to shape stone into tools with purpose, and to use their social bonds to overcome challenges. These achievements laid the foundation for later breakthroughs, from the control of fire to the development of complex languages. By understanding their story, we gain a deeper appreciation for the roots of human creativity and the resilience that has carried us through the ages. As we look back on the story of Homo ergaster, 
we see the seeds of what would become the defining traits of our species. Their ability to innovate, their resilience in the face of change, and their willingness to venture into the unknown all resonate with the journey that modern humans continue to undertake. The legacy of Homo ergaster is a reminder that the story of human evolution is not just a tale of biological change, but of the spirit of exploration that has driven us from the savannas of Africa to the farthest reaches of the planet. It is a story that connects us to our ancient past and inspires us to keep pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Their story ends, but the journey they began continues in each of U.S. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey into the world of Homo ergaster and their role in shaping human history. We hope you enjoyed exploring their story and the insights into our ancient past. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating stories on history with Fitbot.